Welcome to Make Something. I'm David Petruto. Today I'm going to show you how to make this step stool with only two power tools, a jigsaw and a hand drill. And today's video is brought to us by Simply Safe. Back in high school, I made something very similar. This was one of my very first woodworking projects. And today I'm gonna to show you how to do it without any clamps and just these two power tools. In this video, I'm going to make two versions of this. One with the jigsaw and the drill, and then another one with all the fancy equipment that I have here in the shop. There will be plans available for this. There will be a link down below in the description. Let's get started. This could be your very first woodworking project. Woodworking can be as complicated or as simple as you want it to be or as expensive or relatively inexpensive as you want it to be. Just because you see some billionaire YouTuber using a big fancy table saw doesn't mean that you can't do the same thing with a cheap, inexpensive table saw or even a jigsaw. And today I'm going to show you how to make this tool with only a handheld jigsaw and a drill. I got this piece of poplar from the home center. I don't recommend getting your wood from there. I always recommend going to your local hardwood dealer because they can cut it and plant it for you. You're gonna find better quality wood and it's gonna be cheaper. I know that some of you are not going to listen to me and you're gonna end up getting your wood from the home center anyway. So I designed this project around this piece of board which you can get at Home Depot and it comes in at nine and a quarter inches wide. And so there's less ripping that we have to do with with the jigsaw. I usually get all of my hardwoods from KenCraft. It is a locally owned and family run business here in Toledo, Ohio, and they do sell online so you can check them out. To get successful cuts with a jigsaw, you have to have the right blade. Don't use an all-purpose blade or don't use a blade that's made for metal. You want a blade that's made for wood with at least 10 teeth per inch. So the right blade makes all the difference. We'll go ahead and we'll start with the top of the stool. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark my length here. Use the combination square to draw my line. Because there's no fancy joinery with the stool and it doesn't require super precise straight lines, I'm just going to cut right on the line. With the jigsaw, slow is the way to go. The blade of the jigsaw is going to pull it through the wood. So all you really need to do is just guide it on the line. The next thing I need to do is cut a slot in this top piece for a place to put my hand. For that, I am going to use a Forstner bit in my drill and drill two holes in here and then connect those holes with the jigsaw. Just let the bit do the work. You don't have to push real hard. I can see it poking out the back here. So what it can do is turn this over, use that little poke out hole and drill from this side. And we get a nice clean cut with no tear out. So rinse and repeat. Top is all done, so now we are gonna cut the two legs out of this remaining piece of poplar. The two legs are not as wide as the top here, so what we need to do is draw a line down here and then cut off one leg and then cut off the other leg. You want to save this cutoff because we're going to use that later. Before we cross cut those legs to length, I need to set my jigsaw at a 10 degree angle. So I have it clamped up in my bench here and I have a digital angle gauge and I'm just going to move this until I get to 10 degrees or as close as I can get it. If you don't have a digital angle gauge like this, you can always use a protractor. In woodworking, there are always multiple ways to do nearly 
everything. And this doesn't have to be super precise, just close enough. I drew three lines on the board here. And once again, I'm just going to follow the line with the jigsaw at that 10 degree angle. And notice that this first one is inset a little bit. So there's support for the jigsaw. If it was too close to the edge here, I wouldn't have any, any support there. So there is going to be a little bit of waste right there, but that's okay. We could use some firewood. It's getting cold. Because we have the parallel angle here and the parallel angle here, that is going to sit like that. This other piece will sit like that. And then this top will go on there like that and it'll have a nice little overhang all the way around. And that cutoff piece from earlier, it's already to the width that we need. So all we need to do is transfer and cut that angle there, transfer and cut that angle there. We can start gluing up. Then one last thing I want to do is cut this little decorative V on the bottom of the leg. So now we have our two angled legs that are going to go like that. I have a line going down the middle and then a line that marks where I want the top of the support to go. And the support is going to go in like this. Now, I'm going to assume you don't have any clamps. So I'm going to attempt a couple of tricks. I'm going to put some wood glue on the end here, but leave a space for some CA glue or super glue and then glue that into place. And that super glue is going to set really fast within minutes and work as a clamp while the wood glue dries. Now this is not going to be a very strong joint like this, but hopefully this holds long enough for us to get some dowels in there in a later step. You may notice I have not sanded away any of the rough edges left by the saw. I'm just gonna leave it as is. If this is your first wood breaking project, don't get caught up in the details. Just get to know the tools, have some fun, and then become obsessed with the details later. So I'm just going to center this on the line and just hold it in place for a minute while that CA glue sets. So now that has set after a couple minutes and I'm gonna do the same thing with the other end. So just add a little bit of glue and then some CA glue, commonly known as super glue. I'm going to do the same thing with the other piece. And while you're holding that in place, letting that set, take a board. I'm just going to use what's going to be the top and just kind of set it on the bottom here to make sure that the legs are going to sit flush with the floor. And that's going to be close enough. Again, this is going to go up here, but I'm just using this as reference for what's going to be the floor to make sure that it doesn't wobble. Before we reinforce those weak ass joints, we're gonna let the wood glue sit and dry for a couple of hours. So now we need to mark the outside where this center support is. If you have a combination square like this, you could measure that right there and then transfer that to the outside. If you don't have a combination square, you could easily just measure it and then mark your lines. So now we are going to drill two holes right there and right there. And again, on the other side, right there and right there, and then fill that in with a dowel. That is going to really strengthen this up, especially since you're gonna be standing on it. I have a 5 16 inch dowel, and I've got the same size drill bit in my drill. I have a Brad Point drill bit in here, which has a nice little point in there. These are great for woodworking. And we're going to drill two holes. I suggest not going this way, but to hold it this way. That way you can see from above if you're going to blow out one of the sides and we can make sure that we're definitely going to go into the support beam right here. I've got a piece of tape on there to let me know that I've drilled two inches deep. Pull it out and clear out the chips every once in a while. That way you're not pushing too hard because this joint isn't very strong and I don't want to break that joint. There we go. And then we'll do the next one. So now we can throw in a bunch of wood glue in there. We can stick in our dowel 
wipe off some of that excess because that was way too much wood glue. If you don't think you're bottoming out, you can cut it off and then take a hammer and pound that in. I have this flush trim saw. This gets a lot of use for things like this. That's why you see all that glue on there. This is relatively inexpensive and it's a nice tool to have because you can cut flush with the face without marring up the face. I can take a scrap piece of wood, wrap some sandpaper around that, and sand that down. We're gonna do the same exact thing with the top. So once you have it centered on there, you can then transfer that line to the outside. So I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna add a little bit of glue. I'm gonna throw a scrap board on here, add some weight, and we're gonna let that dry. That has been drying for a little bit. I've got my lines transferred from the bottom to the side to the top, and then I've marked where I want to drill my holes. We're not going to go as deep as the other dowels just because we don't need to. It looks like I can go straight down and not blow through the sides, but I'm going to angle it just a little bit. Get rid of some of those chips. Glue. The only power tools that I used was the hand drill and the wiggle saw. If you have any kind of wobble in it at all, you can take a file to the feet until that is gone. So now, I'm going to make another one, but I'm going to use some fancy woods and all the fancy tools and equipment that I have available to me. Just to show you that there are multiple ways to do nearly everything. All of this fancy equipment that I'm about to use is going to make this process a lot easier, a lot quicker, repeatable. I can make a whole bunch of these and batch them out, give them out as Christmas gifts if I wanted to. I just wanted to show you that there are multiple ways to do nearly everything. But before I get to that second one, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor, and that is Simply Safe. Simply Safe is a robust whole home security system that's easy to use, affordable, and free from contracts and hidden costs. Systems are shipped right to your door where you can set them up on your own, and your home is monitored 24 seven with the ability to check in at any moment right from your phone. If you've ever wanted to make your home feel safer, there is no better time than now. Simply Safe is giving you early access to all their Black Friday deals at 50% off or more on their award-winning home security. You get to decide and design the system that works best. No appointments or strangers coming into your home. It's easy to set up yourself. I've done it twice. They've got sensors to cover every window, room, and door, plus lots of other great extras like water sensors, smoke detectors, and HD cameras. And we've recently added a couple of their outdoor security cameras so we can monitor while we are away or see who's approaching the house. From there, your home is professionally monitored 24 seven, and if anything happens, Simply Safe's always on team will call the authorities immediately. So, save 50% or more on your Simply Safe security system during their biggest sale of the year. Visit simplysafe.com slash make something to learn more. Thank you, Simply Safe, for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's get back to these step stools.